Okay, we're good. Hello, welcome to Treat Tuesday. No, you stay. <laughs> he wants to bark. Every time I say hello, he just wants to go insane. So there is a mixture in here. They're going to be our treat today, and again, we do eat these. Um, this is the big three-pound bag. Yeah, I know you're drooling. You're not getting any. Just like the last video, we're going to go over the treats and the consistency, what they smell like. I'm probably not going to taste them. We'll go over the ingredients. We'll see how he likes them. We'll rate them on a scale of one to five bones, just like the last treats. Um, and like so we'll go over the ingredients in order and I'll kind of explain what they are not too in-depth But just briefly so you know so we'll go ahead and get started So like I said, this is the assortment variety bag here You have the original flavor the chicken the cheddar and the char tar flavors all mixed together These are the mini size and so for comparison. I'll show you. I think this is the cheddar one Get back in the filming. I think this is the chicken one. I don't know. It stinks either way. But for size comparison, like that's my hand, that's the size of the treat. Um, and they, they come in the different, like so the different flavors you do get. I'll show you all four flavors. I don't know which one this one is, but this is the one either the chicken or the cheese. And you also get this one, and you get this one. I think it's original flavor. And then you can also get the char tar flavor as well. Oh, come on, focus. You got it. Just the four different kinds. Like, so this is a three pound bag. These are the mini size. So they do make these in the different sizes that you can buy. I believe you can get mini, small, large, and extra large, or something like that. But these are the Old Mother Covered Baking Company. So it was established in 1926. Are you creeping? He loves these, like loves these. So the smell, Again, each one is different, but because they're all kind of mixed together in the bag, you can't really get a good sense of what each one smells like. Um, you can also get them in just chicken, just the original, just the cheese, and just the, uh, the char tar flavor. Um, so just whatever flavors that you want, whichever one you like best for your dog. We'll go ahead and get started and kind of break them down. They are crunchy cookie biscuits. I think if I together. You know, they are tough, they're not chewy by any means. But in the ingredients, the first things that they do, and this is for a lot of their cookies that they do make, it's whole wheat flour. So a lot of people probably don't know what whole wheat flour is or if it's good for your dog. Um, whole wheat or whole grain flours, they use the entire grain so they're not stripped for the different grains. And so they do still contain all the nutrients of the grain. Now if your dog has a grain allergy, I really don't suggest these cookies. They are full of grains. They have a whole wheat flour, oatmeal, and bran. And he's 70 pounds, um, and I'll show you what he's doing because he's trying to crunch up on them. <laughs> you like these cookies? You do like these cookies, huh? Make my videos last so much longer than they need to be. And then you get into oatmeal. So again, um, oats are one of the healthy um, grains. You'll see those a lot in like dog dry food, even in some wet foods. A lot of treats, they'll be like pumpkin and oatmeal or lamb and brown rice and oatmeal. Um, you'll get a lot of oatmeal with apple. So the, they try to mix in some grain. Again, a lot of times it's to hold the treats together better. Um, however, oats are, you know, they're very high in protein. They're really high in soluble fiber and they're really high in iron. Iron for the most part. Oats are also low in gluten and GMO, so if that's something that you're looking for, this is not a gluten-free treat. Um, nowhere on the bag does it express that it's gluten-free. Why are you licking yourself? And the next ingredient actually I'm reading on the bag is a wheat bran. So a wheat bran, it's gonna be the outer shell of the wheat plant um, that they use, and it's, also, it's usually removed during processing um, for when you're just trying to get like wheat flour. It's really rich in fiber, um, but they do help with constipation, but again, it is one of those minute uh, ingredients in the ingredients. So it's not the major one, it's not one that, you know, is 75% of the cookie. 
the next ingredient we have is chicken fat. So chicken fat can come from any part of the chicken while they're cooking it. It can be rendered down. Um, this chicken fat is actually preserved um, with natural preservatives. So it doesn't say what those are, but it is preserved in a way so it doesn't last forever but it will give it a longer shelf life. But then of course the very next ingredient is chicken. So they do mix chicken in with all their cookies that are in this line um, and it gives it that you know that meaty, that rich flavor that dogs really like. And then you get into cane molasses. So this was something that I actually wasn't expecting to see in these cookies which is totally fine. It is the byproduct of the process that turns you know sugar cane and sugar beets into sugar. Um, but other than that I couldn't really find anything if it's bad for dogs or good for dogs, it's just an extra additive. It does have a little sweetness to it, so some people don't find that it's recommended for dog treats. But that's totally on you. I don't have a problem with it because there's not a lot of sugar in these cookies per se. And we'll go on to the next ingredient. So you have a couple of spices coming up. First one is going to be turmeric. I didn't know that turmeric had anti-inflammatory properties to it. Um, and that was something that I came across when I was doing research for dog treats. A lot of people like to put turmeric in their homemade dog treats, especially if they have senior dogs. They're never too young to start getting a joint. Um, additive into their food and then you have paprika which as we all know kind of has a, a kind of a stronger smell to when you bake with it or you cook with paprika it also has that nice color in there so it kind of helps take away from the brownness and that's probably one of the things I use for you know giving I think it's the, the cheese or the chicken one it's like a yellowish red tint to it um, but I did not know that too much paprika can actually irritate the nasal passages and it can upset the tummy but you would have to inhale it a lot or eat a lot of it in mean, a larger quantity. Like your dog would probably have to eat this whole bag of cookies, like no joke, um, for it to really, really mess up the tummy. I'm not saying that eating it with everything else, but if he had, you know, a cup full of paprika, that would probably do some serious damage um, to his nasal passages, probably give him quite a bit of irritation, probably a lot of diarrhea. Um, so be very careful if you are giving paprika, but other than that I couldn't really find if it's a good thing to add in a treat or not. I did find that some dogs really like the smell of it. I don't cook with it. I don't put it in his food. I don't, the only time he gets it is in these kind of cookies. But again, it's one of those things that he's not getting it in a large amount. He hasn't shown any sensitivities towards his cookies. So I'm going to continue to use them even though they have paprika in there. The next few ingredients I love. Um, eggs, best protein that you can get. My cat is out waiting for cookies. Apples is next on the list, and I like apples. I do give him raw apples, cooked apples. We share apples and peanut butter sometimes. The next one is going to be carrots. Again, this is something that he absolutely loves. We give baby carrots to him, we steam them, we give them raw. So I do like that they added the carrots in there, and it also probably gives the more orangey colors um, of these cookies color and then you have garlic powder so garlic is one of those natural herbs that a lot of people like to put in their dog's food it helps stimulate the intestines it's really good for you know the inside um, there is controversy on whether garlic powder is okay for dogs or cats some of your holistic vets will say that it's okay because it helps with digestion other people say no it's not okay because garlic itself is very toxic to dogs and cats this is going to be in such a small small dose in these cookies that's completely up to you. The next one is going to be salt. So like the last treats that we reviewed last week, almost every treat will have salt in it. also have paprika extracts, so a little bit more concentrated. I don't know why they have it in both forms. A lot of people think that it's a really natural herb to put into foods and to treats. I don't see why it's needed, but again, maybe it's something for flavor. The next ingredient is going to be white cheddar cheese because they do have the cheddar biscuits in here. Now, if you got the original or maybe you got the char tar or the chicken, it may not have the white cheddar cheese in it. So if your dog is a little more finicky and they can't really have a lot of dairy, maybe steer clear of the cheddar biscuits, but mine, he loves cheese. And then you have bone charcoal. So this was something that I didn't really know what it was or why it's even in dog's food. Um, but bone charcoal, again, is something that's broken down in the grinding process of the bones. And a lot of people like it and they use it for bad breath, they use it for gassiness. Um, and in cookie form, like the crunch will help with any plaque on the teeth, so that's a good reason why a lot of vets will suggest feeding kibble or partial kibble diets, um, or giving crunchy cookies, or they want you to give them those dental chews because they're a little 
tougher and they can get up in those cracks and crevices. And then you have your last preservative, your last ingredient is your mix to coferols. I hope I'm saying that right because we talk coferols for all I know. Um, but it is the last ingredient on the back, so there's really not that many ingredients in here that I didn't know what they were. I could pronounce everything, everything I had heard of before and other treats, so there weren't a lot of non-natural ingredients, which I really like in these cookies. So if you go on to Chewy, um, you can actually find a bag of these, and they have different sizes, so I'm just reading right off the website. They have a 5-ounce bag, they have a 20-ounce bag a 3.5 pound bag, a 3.8 pound bag, and a 20 pound bag of these cookies. And this is the mini, so I'm looking at the Old Mother Hubbard Classic Original Assortment, which is what these are in specific, the Biscuits Baked Dog Treats. So they are baked, they're not fried or whatever else you might think. So this is the actual, I read it wrong, so it's three pounds and 3.8 pound bag. That's what this is. List price for $14.39, $14.39. And then the price that they have on here is $8.69. So not too bad, just out of curiosity. Let's see with the 20. So the 20 pound bag, if you want, it's a, it looks like a huge box. It's only $40.94. $41 is actually not that bad, and it says that it lists for $67.80. So you're saving 40% by buying it on Chewy, and I will definitely link that below so you can see. Like I said, they do have the different flavors if you actually like. Old Mother Hubbard does make other ones too. They make um, peanut butter, they make chicken and apples, an extra tasty assortment instead of the original assortment. And they also have low fat, they have hip and joint, they, she also makes, say she, Old Mother Hubbard. They make soft baked cookies as well. So I'll link that so you guys can see all these different things. They have puppy ones to help with puppies. Um, fresh breath, bacon and cheese, tartar control, which is that char tar that we were talking about, livers. They have a just vegetarian line, so if you don't want any meat in your dog's food and you just want to give them a vegetarian diet, which personally I don't recommend. Dogs need meat in their diet, just like we need meat in our diet and cats do. But it's your dog, and if your vet has found a way to give you a diet that you know is healthy for your dog, and they say that the vegetarian will work, they have those. They have the 20 pound box of the peanutty, which look like little peanut shaped versus like a cookie shaped. Um, they actually look like Nutter Butters for people. They have a 20 pound box for $57, so that's not too bad. And they have so many. They have little training treats if you like that kind. And all of her cookies, literally, I don't see a single one that is almost at four stars. They're all up there about five stars. They're between four and five. Chewy also has a good deal. You guys can save 20% if you choose the auto ship. So if you want them to send you these cookies or any other treat, they also have food on there and toys and pretty much anything that you can think of for any of your pets. Um, they have everything for cat, dogs, fish, birds, small pets, horses, reptiles, um, just about anything you can buy in a pet store. So I would actually recommend going online and buying these. But if you want to shop locally and you don't want to go online, you can. I picked these up at PetSmart, so they do have these. Like I said, I don't know if your PetSmart will have the big bag and the mini, but they should have a variety. I know Petco also sells them, and there are other small little um, local pet shops that will probably also sell them as well. I definitely give these a 5 out of 5 stars, just like most of the pet parents on Chewy. He loves them. I love the mini size. Um, he would tear through a large too much for my value. I definitely like the mini for the money. <laughs> but um, yeah, so I'll see you guys next week and I hope you guys enjoy the video.